Do you want to know more about building a shelf layout? Why don't you stick around and watch how I did it on my in-scale model right with the Sayer Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and InScale. Welcome back. Um, this is part two of our three-part series on how we're building the Amboy Secondary. Uh, Amboy Secondary is the little shelf that I uh, built out there in the fan room to extend the layout. So here in part two, we're going to be focusing on powering all the track, uh, installing all the tortoises, wiring up the switch panel, installing the fascia and finishing that off, and uh, finishing off the first level scenery to get ready for our structures. So why don't you sit back, watch the video, see how we did it, and I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install some uh, terminal bars. These are two different styles I use. Those black ones with the clear covers I actually got off of Amazon. So uh, go check those out. So here's the uh, positioning of the terminal bars on the uh, bench work. So after drilling three holes in the bench work for the wiring, I get started running my bus lines. Um, I'm going to run uh, three sets of bus lines. Uh, the yellow and purple is for all the lighting. Uh, the red and black is for all of the tortoises and the switch panel and the blue and white is for my DCC bus. So I like to color code all my wiring. It just helps uh, troubleshooting when you're underneath the, the bench work so you can tell what is what in that big wire bundle. So now I'm going to run taps from the bus lines over to the terminal bars. This way we have places to mount uh, and attach all of our wiring. The two on the back wall are for the purple and yellow wire and the two that I'm working on there are for the red and black lines. Now I just attach the tap lines into the bus lines using 3M suitcase connectors. I zip tie everything all together so it's nice and neat. I find that keeping all your wiring neat, you have to do it at each layer you add because or else you'll have that big bird's nest at the end. So that's why I just take the time to zip tie all the bundles that I put in uh, as we go. Here I'm drilling holes for the uh, track feeders. So what I do here is I just take a bar clamp, clamp it to the bench work so I can just easily pull off the wire to make my wire feeders. It makes it go a little quicker. So here I've attached my feeders to the rails and now we're just stuffing it down through the hole underneath the layout. I find that when you skin the insulation back and just have the bare wire, it's easier to hide in the scenery. And here I am uh, connecting the wire feeders to the bus lines for the DCC. Very critical that you use these 3M suitcase connectors. Those cheap ones from Walmart, you're not going to get good electrical connection and you'll have dead spots. And here's the wiring up to this point. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing connecting wires to go from that terminal bar into the main layout room to connect into the bus lines over there so everything's all tapped and powered in. If you notice I'm running the wire alongside of the uh, sub road bed 
This way it's out of the way and doesn't get snagged on any trains coming through the hole. Here I am uh, testing the loco net. Here I am testing the 12 volt DC buses. Um, if you notice I'm out of phase, um, that's because a certain little girl uh, switched my leads around and I didn't realize it. And here we are running a train through for testing to make sure that everything's all powered and there's no dead spots. So at this point, I'm very concerned with what if there's a derailment in the hole? Those trains will be permanent fixtures inside that wall. So I came up with the idea that you'll see in the next scene to use foam core to make a little tunnel. So here I'm installing the foam core and hot gluing it to the sheetrock. And some more testing just to check the clearances on the foam core. Okay, so here we are getting started with the fascia. So what I did is I mocked everything up and cut it outside in the garage and brought it down and held it in place with bar clamps to check the fit. Once I did that, then I used PL Premium Construction Adhesive, put it up there, and then shot it in with the brad nailer. The brad nailer is very effective for doing the fascia work if you're not doing curves. If you do curves, the brads will not hold. So at this point, there's some fit issues with that corner. So I come up with a solution to use a block of wood to fill the corner and then reestablish it and shoot it with brad nails. So it came out really good at the end. So to prevent trains from running off the end of the bench work, I use a piece of uh, plexiglass to uh, finish it off. Okay, so the tortoises are all installed underneath and the throw bars are run through the layout. Um, here what I'm doing is I pre-make up all my switches to go in the switch panel and I install them as I go and wire them together temporarily with alligator clips. This allows me to test everything and make sure everything works the way I want it to before I solder and heat shrink everything together. And here's a test of the completed switch panel. So I spackled and sanded everything. The corner came out nice and smooth. Uh, you notice I, I made a filler piece to finish off the backdrop up against the wall so it looks more clean. Um, now once I've sanded it and made it smooth, I'm going to go ahead and prime it. So even though I used brad nails instead of screws, there were still some divots in the masonite. So spackling was a must if you want a nice finished clean look. So the color is Stonington Gray, it's by Benjamin Moore. Um, what I'm using here is a nice high quality uh, edging brush and a nice blue Worcester roller. Uh, and put a nice coat of the gray paint on there to make it nice and finished. Also at this time I also painted the walls just to uh, cover up any marks that I made during the process of uh, putting this up. So 
So the blue that I used for the edge piece dried differently than the blue for the backdrop. So we'll have to come back and blend it all in when we do our clouds. So now I just finished off the section with a drink holder, a throttle pocket, and a bill box. So here I've installed the green foam on the front edge. I glued it in with PL Premium. I only went with one layer this time because I needed more clearance for the switch panel. It uh, worked out better and I used less material than last time. And that wraps up our work for this time. Okay, everyone, so there you go. That's how we did it. Uh, very, very happy with the progress so far. It's coming out really good. Um, we tested it out the, the last session uh, that just passed. Um, two little uh, issues were turnouts. Uh, it seems like it's going to be spring tension, so I'm going to be upgrading those springs and fixing that. Otherwise, uh, the operators, uh, Chris Despoto ran it, and he said the, uh, he liked the switch, it, it, the way it came out, and uh, he was very happy with it. So, you know, a couple uh, little things to uh, want to talk about. You know, I made the determination here to do this. This came out of an old uh, model router uh, issue. It was the when they were doing the beer line, they talked about, you know, incorporating buildings into your fascia. And one of the ideas was to open up a hole and put the interior in. So we're going to try that here. I'm going to, this is going to be a little warehouse. And, uh, you know, I came from the idea, someone put a comment last uh, video about, you know, doing some kind of structures or sceneries out on this side. So this is what I came up with. And um, I'm gonna put it like an abandoned uh, track in there because when you looked at what was going on down there in Keller Industrial, when a tenant moved out that had rail service, the new tenant may not have wanted it. So they kind of just, Conroe will come in and pull the, uh, the turn out the switch and uh, leave the, the rail in place and kind of get overgrown and stuff. So that's what the plan is here for this scene. And then for the other end down there um, by the Turnpike Bridge, uh, I'm gonna try putting in one of them BLMA uh, billboards and uh, I think it will dress up the scene and kind of I'm, I got a plan for what uh, I'm going to put on there for advertising, kind of tie it. I'm going to use an old uh, 92.7 uh, WOBM FM. was a big radio station in the 80s down here in Jersey Shore, and they have billboards and advertisements everywhere. So I'm going to put one of those signs up there, kind of incorporate the scene and kind of, you know, to the average person when they come in and look at it, they're like, oh, this is New Jersey. And I said, I recognize that billboard. So that's kind of the ideal. And so with the fascia color, uh, really hit a home run on what I wanted here to achieve and that was I want you to come around the corner and not really have something sticking out but you see something like oh what is that and then you see that it's the layout so I think putting in this gray color the same as the wall on the fascia really helps achieve that and it kind of makes it look really clean and neat uh, and it's very appealing and it doesn't it's not a big 
eyesore. It's a, it's a I think it's a work of art the way it's coming out. So I'm really happy with that. And then to dress up the bottom, the one thing you didn't see was, because um, I didn't put it on video, is underneath I put a piece of um, masonite underneath uh, to um, hide up all the wires. So it's kind of, I got screws on T-nuts in there and if I need to get access to work on it, I just pull it down. So uh, that helped uh, neaten up the whole scene uh, by tucking all them wires up. So uh, very happy with that. And the one thing I didn't record was, because it kind of happened real fast, it was kind of a quick project, was putting this styrofoam in here. Um, so you remember from previous uh, part one, uh, I put in like five layers. Well here I only put one. Um, try to cut down on the amount of material that I needed and uh, I'd, so far it worked out pretty good so I just uh, adhered it in with uh, PL Premium construction adhesive. It's holding really well. I used it, also used it to fill the gaps just to kind of like uh, make it a little easier when the scenery comes up in the next part. Okay so next part, part three. First I want to tell you this, um, you know looking at my schedule um, we're doing a family vacation in April and we're going to be gone for a week and a half. So I don't think we're going to be able to get that part three video all produced and out to you at the end of April. So what I am going to do is this. I know a lot of you have asked for a layout tour to see all the progress. So what I'm going to do is that's going to be April and we're going to bump part three into May. So uh, you can expect uh, you'll see the finished product here for this in May. And next month we're going to do a little layout tour. So on part three on this we're going to be painting up all our buildings. Uh, painting the track. I'm going to show you how to scratch build those um, cantonary poles because I got a lot, a lot of questions about that. And then we'll come in and do our trees and our scenery and wrap the whole thing up by the end of May. And so with that, that's all I have for this time. Be sure if you're seeing this video for the first time and you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the channel so you can follow along. I'm always producing good free content for everybody. Love for you to uh, join us. Um, make sure to check out our Facebook page and Instagram account because I'm always putting daily updates. And otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.